get you all worked up. Oh, forget it. One of the most indelible moments in the Academy Award-winning documentary, The Times of Harvey Milk, occurs after the assassination. Dan White has slain Harvey and the mayor of San Francisco. And in response, our community filled the streets of the Castro, candles in hand, and marched in a moving testament to their grief and solidarity. But one lone voice cut through the sobs and whispered reverence. Tom Amiano recalls a seemingly homeless man crying out to the tens of thousands marching. Where is your anger? Harvey Milk, our first openly gay elected official, had been murdered by a small-minded, jealous, bigoted heterosexual. We were robbed of a hero. We were reduced immeasurably in our representation. We lost a clarion voice for our silenced majority, and we responded to that violence en masse with a loving tribute instead of storming City Hall and demanding retribution. Where, indeed, was our anger? But when Dan White escaped the murder conviction, we found our anger, and it wasn't pretty. But the legacy of our outrage is openly gay and lesbian elected officials all across the nation. Decades later, when an overpowered Matthew Shepard was found slumped on a lonely Wyoming fence, tears streaking the lifeblood dried on his face, again the cry went out. Where is your anger? Many of us called to the community for action, for justice, for an end to free speech, for politicians and religious leaders and community watchdogs who spread bigotry and encourage such violence. Most of our anger was drowned in our sorrow and silenced in rhetoric. But enough remained to beget anti-hate crime bills in cities and states. And now we have witnessed an election season where even our friends felt free to spit on us. No one was surprised to hear G.W. Bush call for legislation against us. But where were our allies? John Kerry, for whom I hosted the most profitable GLBT fundraising dinner ever held in New York, told the nation he would support a constitutional amendment in Massachusetts to ban gay marriage. Can you imagine? Instead of standing up and saying, hey, we've had gay marriage for months in Massachusetts and no one's getting hurt, no one's getting special rights, no heterosexual marriage is suffering. So let's stop the panic and act like rational adults. Instead of standing up for reason and equal justice, he used his national platform to say that it was okay to discriminate. With friends like Kerry, we might as well have Clinton. Oh, I know there are those among us who think Clinton was our pal, and I am certainly among those who are grateful that Bill spoke our name and hired us openly for his White House and treated us with a modicum of respect. But let us not forget that it was on his watch that the Defense of Marriage Act was created, and he signed it into law. And it was on his watch that Don't Ask, Don't Tell became official policy, causing higher rates of anti-gay violence and record-breaking discharges from service. Where was our anger then? My brothers and sisters, I'm not usually an alarmist, but I feel that someone needs to say this. If they can so easily pass laws to ban us from marriage, none of our rights can be taken for granted. If community standards is reason enough to legislate anti-gay discrimination, the backslide of our freedom has just begun. I beg you to take a long, hard look at the election results from around the country, get in touch with your anger, and put it to work. If we do not, I promise our community will be attacked by the fascist right in the name of decency and family values with unprecedented vigor. Better to find your anger now than wait for the next election and ask, where are my rights?